August 30th, 2019. Hunting for Wabbit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, good morning. Welcome to Egret Isle Farm and the Serene Disciple Project. Uh, I am back here in the woods this morning, uh, as I was last week. And if you haven't seen that video, uh, please go check it out. Doing a little light hunting, maybe rabbit or squirrel. But as I walk through these woods this morning, uh, I'm reminded that I'm not the first one to walk through these woods like this, looking for something to bring home to the fire. Um, I'm reminded that my story is really part of a much larger and longer story of this place. I alluded to this uh, last week. My story is intersecting with, being woven together with that larger story. It's happening right here, <laughs> right now. Uh, but it's also an example of a, um, a larger principle that we're going to talk about this week. But first, let's begin with this creek bottom forest. People have been roaming these woods for thousands of years in search of game. The squirrel and the rabbits and the white-tailed deer that are here now have been here for thousands of years. The big cats are mostly gone, but the occasional cougar or bobcat still pass this way. The buffalo no longer roam through here in their thousands. The bear are gone, but the coyotes and the fox are here, as are the wild hogs, the descendants of the first hogs that the first settlers brought to this area. And so how did that happen? How did the settlers uh, end up here? Well. In the early 1800s, uh, this was part of a huge cattle lease of many tens of thousands of acres called Robbins Prairie, and then it was subdivided into smaller tracts, and this became part of another huge cattle lease of tens of thousands of acres called uh, Bennett's Prairie. Um, and at that time, the thousands of buffalo were replaced by cattle who roamed these meadows. And at that time, there were no fences, no houses, no barns out here on the Blackland Prairie and very few people living. And then in the late 1800s, the land was further subdivided and the 125 acres that would include my farm was bought by a Danish immigrant named Niels Nelson or Dansky Nelson to the neighbors around here. And he built the first house on this property. In fact, he built it right back there. My neighbor has built his house almost, but not quite on the site of the original farmhouse on the property. In fact, this is the original house on the property, which was later moved to its current location just a few miles away. The original farmhouse was just a little further that way, but not too far. Um, uh, the Nelson barn, the barn on the homestead, was shaded by that tree right there. The barn sat right there. Uh, in fact, I helped tear that barn down just a few years ago, and I used some of the wood from that original barn on this homestead to build Kay's garden shed. I'll show you that in a little bit. But I can close my eyes and just imagine. I can imagine dogs barking back there and maybe a screen door slamming, the cattle lowing in the barn right there ready to be milked. And, and, and the chatter of chickens, and maybe the laughter of little Joe Nelson, who would become the second generation of Nelsons to have their lives woven into the story of this place. Two generations of Nelsons lived here, walked these fields and looked at the weather and worried and wondered how it was all going to turn out and raised livestock here. Here's a photo of Joe Nelson uh, and his wife Grace later in life having dinner with the Hansons uh, across the road. 
two generations of Nelsons, two generations of their sweat and blood, their hopes and dreams, two generations of men and women looking at the same sky and meadows and woods that I look at, their story woven into this place and so woven into my story. I'd like to pause and, and give credit for this photo, which appears in a book called Stuck in the Mud at Post Oak Island to Charlene uh, Jordan. Uh, this is a great book and I'll be talking a little about it in my blog this week as well. You can see the link below. And then almost 50 years ago, Joe Nelson, having lived his life here and, and gone on, the farm was sold to Bill and Lita Leach, who planted a large pecan grove here. You can still see the remnants behind me. And so another layer was added to the story of this place. In 1983, uh, Bill and Lita sold the old house and it got moved off. And they built a new house and built new ponds and new outbuildings. But before they sold the old house, they stripped all of the old beadboard out of it and used it for the interior of the new house. And so now we live with that old beadboard all around us. We live in that story. Bill and Lita and the pecan grove that they planted grew old together here. They're gone and the pecan grove is mostly gone except for a few old veterans like, like this one. But again, I can close my eyes and imagine what it was like right here. It's row upon row of pecan trees and the lanes between them. Can you hear the birds singing in the trees and flitting from, from tree to tree and the sunlight in the morning like this slanting down in the lanes between the rows of trees? That must have been something. And then in 2014, Bill and Lita gone. The farm was sold once again and further subdivided. And my wife Kay and I bought the first tract out here, 12 acres, to which we would later add eight more to give us 20. Um, and Egret Isle Farm was born. We bought the tract with the new farmhouse, well, new in, in 1983. And this is the garden shed that I built from the wood from the original barn on this property. You can see the door behind me. That was actually the barn door that I harvested from that old farmhouse. And that is a great example. Our story unfolding here is, is not a new story. It's, it's just another layer. Uh, Niels Nelson went in and out of the door of that barn. Joe Nelson went in and out of, the, of this door of that barn. And now Kay and I go in and out through that door, now in a garden shed. Our story unfolding here is, is supported in the structure of the larger, richer story that has been happening here for thousands of years. The story of Native Americans walking these woods in hope of game. Spanish missionaries moving through here on the way up from Mexico. Cowboys herding cattle right over there. And a Danish immigrant coming here to make his home on down through the generations to right here and right now. And maybe someday my grandchildren will come up this path, maybe with this gun, hoping for a rabbit. And maybe one day their grandchildren will walk these very same woods. And maybe they'll pause right here and think about their great, great grandfather who roamed these woods in the wild and burly early days of the 21st century. Wow, that's something to think about. Well, I think that's enough for today. We'll see you next time. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and give. I've been hired by the rest of the animals. I think it's time we started negotiating some compensation for participation in these videos. I'm sorry, what did you say?
please don't patronize me. This is serious.